Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at two low-cost keyboards from Razer. We have the Sinosa V2 here on the bottom, and then the Ornata V2 here on the top. And these are both membrane keyboards that incorporate per-key RGB lighting and all of the other Razer Synapse features that you get with some of their higher-end keyboards. And we're going to be taking a closer look at both of these in this review in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that both keyboards came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what these two keyboards are all about. Now the price point on the Sinosa here is $49, and the one behind it here, the Ornata, runs for $93. Both of these keyboards are kind of on the lower end of the price spectrum for Razer. Usually they have these fancy mechanical key switch keyboards that sell for much more. What's interesting about these is that although the quality of the typing experience isn't great, you do get all of the software features that are on their more expensive keyboards, and we'll walk through the software in a minute. Now we'll take a look here at the lowest price one, the Sinosa first. Uh, the keyboard feels a lot like the pack-in keyboard that you would get with your commodity PC. The keys are very spongy. It's a membrane keyboard, of course, so it's not going to give you that satisfying click that you get with a mechanical keyboard. But it feels pretty well constructed. As membrane keyboards go, I would say this is on the higher quality side of things, but the typing experience is not going to be spectacular. I do like the fact, though, that they added a few uh, media keys here on the upper right-hand corner that you can customize. So it's nice to have some extra keys that you can make use of some of those macro features, which I'll show you in a few minutes. But the overall typing experience on this isn't great. It connects with a USB cable. It's not wireless, and it's just, uh, just a standard USB cable, nothing fancy uh, with that one. Now, the other keyboard here, the Ornata, actually has two pieces. So you get the keyboard itself here along with a wrist rest that will kind of connect magnetically to the keyboard. It does slide around a little bit, but once your hands are on the wrist rest, it's pretty comfortable. And this feels really nice. It's actually similar to wrist rests that Razer makes on some of their more expensive keyboards. And I would say you probably want to use it when you're typing on the keyboard here just to have a comfortable ergonomic experience. Now this one is a membrane keyboard, but they added a click to it, so have a listen. Now they call this a mecha membrane keyboard, and I think that's a very good description of what it feels like to type on it, because you get that spongy, membrane-y kind of feel along with a click as you push the key down. And because they put that click in there, it does require a little more force to get the key pushed. So it feels slightly uh, like a mechanical keyboard, but also slightly like a membrane keyboard. Uh, the keys are very stiff. They will uh, jump back at you pretty quickly here, a lot better than they do on the membrane keyboard we looked at a second ago. But it takes some getting used to, and I think if you are a fan of traditional mechanical switches, this is definitely no substitute. But it is a lot less expensive than some of their mechanical keyboards, and it might be an alternative for those looking for something a little bit uh, better than just a standard membrane keyboard. It uh, feels pretty good from a build quality standpoint. They do have a higher quality cable here for the USB connector. Again, this one is wired and not wireless. It's got a nice nylon braided cable here, which won't get tangled up. Uh, both keyboards have some cable management here on the back, so you can uh, route the cable out either side or through the center. And then both also have some feet here on the bottom to angle uh, the keyboard up. And there are two positions here on those as well. So pretty nice hardware. And again, just a little weird typing on this one. All right, let's take a look at the overall lighting here before we dive into customization. Uh, we've got the lower price Sinosa keyboard here at the top and the Ornata is at the bottom. It looks pretty good. I found that the Ornata is maybe slightly brighter than the Sinosa. Uh, you'll also notice that the areas around the keys are actually brighter than the keys themselves. And I'm guessing this is just due to the membrane uh, construction of these keyboards and the membrane layer kind of acts as a diffuser of the light so you get kind of an outline of the key with the light coming through the key as opposed to directly lighting the key switch like we see in a lot of other keyboards. Uh, you can though customize each key which I'll show you in a second. 
Uh, you will note that the light is not quite uniform across the board, and I have found that some colors look brighter than others depending on uh, what you're configuring. Uh, let's take a look at the software, though, so you can get a feel for how all of this works. So let me pull that up real quick. Uh, what we'll do here is just select one of the two keyboards to get started on. Now, there are a bunch of built-in lighting effects that are pretty easy to implement here. So this one is called Starlight. Uh, they have a bunch of other ones here. There's Fire, and then there's a couple of others that are pretty neat, like this one called Ripple. And once it engages here, I'll show you how that one works. So you got some really cool uh, lighting effects. Again, these are the same effects you'll see on their other keyboards and they're implemented here on these low-cost ones, and you can really have some fun just playing around with that. Uh, what I am going to do, though, is jump into the Chroma Studio so you can get a feel for how the per-key lighting works. And what I'm going to do is uh, select here the W, A, S, and D keys on both of these keyboards, and that will give you an idea as to how fine and granular you can get with your lighting. So if I uh, make these keys blue here and click Save. What you'll see is the keyboards will kind of reset and implement those changes. And because this lighting is not as precise as it might be on some of the other mechanical keyboards we've looked at, you can see that although the W, A, S, and D keys are lit up blue here, it's not quite uniform, is it? It's kind of bleeding over uh, between red and green here on the edges. Uh, I can go in and maybe set this one here to be red, and I'll do that on the other keyboard as well so you can get a feel for that. Um, so the precision isn't quite here if you're really looking for a precise lighting scheme, but you can light up individual keys, which is not something you can always do uh, on one of these lower cost keyboards. A lot of times they limit your lighting to specific zones. So it does look like there are individual LEDs on each key, but it just won't light them up as nicely as you might like them to, uh, given how the lighting is being implemented. But they have some crazy Photoshop-like layering that you can do with the key settings here. So for example, I can grab uh, this number pad area here and just delete the static layer that I have assigned to them at the moment. Let me do it on this one too here. And then what I'm gonna do is add another layer that will not show up on the arrow keys or any of the regular keys here, but will on the number pad. So let's move in Ripple here, and we'll put that underneath. I'll select that layer. And what I'm gonna do here is just select the keys that I want to assign the ripple effect to and give them a color. And then I'm gonna go over to this one here and maybe give them a different color, maybe a little rainbow pattern there. And then I'm gonna click save and that's gonna send the settings over to the keyboard. And now when I type on the number pad here, I get the ripple effect, but just on the number pad keys. And then I could get even crazier here by getting rid of the static layer altogether and maybe assigning Ripple to just every one of these keys here. So let's just do that. And because I have two keyboards right now set up on uh, the software, I can actually have them work together. So if I hit uh, the key here, you can see it moves across both keyboards. Isn't that neat? So if you had other Razer gear, uh, you could have it interact with uh, the other Razer devices you have through the Synapse software in this way. So there's just a lot that you can do. You can set up profiles if you want to have specific things for specific games or whatever. And it's really a lot of fun just to play around with it, just to see what happens. Now, each of the keys can be configured to do whatever you want. So if you don't want your A key to be A, you can have it be something else just by clicking on it here and assigning a function to it. And what I'm going to do here on the low-cost keyboard is show you some of the ways that you can make use of these multimedia keys. Uh, so for example, right now I've got the uh, left multimedia key here selected, and I can have it do any one of these functions on the side. I can have it launch a program, I can have it change the lighting mode, I can have it do a macro if I want and have it execute a bunch of different keys at the same time. I can have it launch the calculator, for example. So if I click save here and then uh, push that key down, the calculator here will light up and I can start using my calculator. So if you don't plan to use these multimedia keys for multimedia, uh, you can have them do different things. Uh, one thing I really like is the text function shortcut here. So for example, I could write out my name and assign that to that same key we were just on. And if I pull up the uh, little text editor here and hit that key again, I can actually just spell my name out with a single key press. So if you have something that you're frequently typing, uh, you can assign it to one of those keys and just have it blasted out for you with a single key press. And I think that can be pretty useful. But my big gripe here is that the keyboards do not retain any of the settings after you close the software. So if you're somebody that just wants to set these things up once and be done with it, you have to have the Synapse software running 
all the time in order for all these fancy settings to continue working. Uh, so for example, right now we're on the very same computer we were on a second ago. I closed out the Synapse software and the keyboards returned to their default functions. So the keyboards will work, but that volume rocker is no longer scrolling and this button here is no longer typing out my name. So if you were thinking about loading the software up, doing your settings and then unloading the software so you're not using up system resources, you're out of luck. That software has got to be running for these keyboards to do all the stuff you just saw. Now you can though sync up settings with the Razer Cloud and if you move the keyboard to another computer, install the software and log into your cloud account, it will sync the settings up that way, but you can't just lock the settings into the keyboard and then just plug it into another computer, so that's an issue. Uh, the other issue at the moment is that it doesn't look like there is Synapse software for the Mac that supports these keyboards. So the keyboards will work on the Mac, but you can't customize lighting or any special macro features or anything like that. They are just going to be uh, dumb USB keyboards. On the Windows side, when you plug them in, it nags you to install the software. There's an actual pop-up that happens uh, when you plug the keyboard into a Windows computer that doesn't have Synapse software installed. Other Razer keyboards do this as well. It is quite annoying, and just be prepared for that. That software really needs to be installed for these keyboards to be happy. On the Linux side, there is an open source alternative that you can download to make uh, some configuration changes similar to what we just saw with the Razer software. So in conclusion here, it's kind of nice to have some keyboards that are relatively affordable in Razer's lineup that have some of the features of their more expensive products. I like the fact that both keyboards here have some extra keys that you can configure for macros and whatever. The backlighting isn't great on these as you saw. It's hard to get a really nice key level precision to it, but you can configure every key individually. They're not as bright as their more expensive keyboards are, especially under my studio lights at the moment, but they are pretty flexible and again have a lot of the feature sets that you might see in some of their more expensive products and they can interoperate with those expensive products as well if you want to go that route. I would say the low-cost keyboard here, the Sonosa, again, will feel very much like a cheap membrane keyboard. Uh, the other one, the uh, Ornata here, uh, does feel a little better, but I do think it's a little bit overpriced for what it is. I would have been happier with a slightly lower price tag on this one. But if you're looking for something in the Razer lineup and don't want to spend all that much money, these might be worth considering. But I do think, for me at least, the fact that you can't retain settings in the keyboard is a bit of a deal breaker just given how kind of bloated that software might be if you're not going to configure the keyboard all that often. That is going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Mark Bollinger, Sergio Morales, Mark Dell, Jim Callagher, and Steven Sue. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.